The crossover apocalypse continues. Americans, they just keep buying the things, so naturally, automakers are taking every excuse possible to build more and more of them. In some cases, they're even killing off cars and instead slotting in crossovers. The latest example of that is this guy, the 2020 Hyundai Venue, which replaces the Accent, a car, as the cheapest point in Hyundai's lineup. But there's a lot more to the story than that. All right, if you're losing track of how big each crossover is and what slots in where and why, trust me, you are not the only one. But the Venue is decidedly the baby in the Hyundai crossover family. It's the smallest one you can get, and it slots in just beneath the Kona. Now, from a competition perspective, this little guy is going to do battle with the Nissan Kicks, the Toyota CHR, and the Honda HRV. But unlike those competitors, this actually looks pretty good. It's a lot less roundy and sort of egg-shaped than any of those three cars, and it has a nice presence to it. The proportions seem right. A lot of that has to do with the trim level that we're working with. This is the top-of-the-line denim trim. And what that means is you get a two-tone paint job and a lot of other stylistic bits on the inside, which we'll unpack in a little bit. If you opt for a single color on the venue, you get seven colors to pick from, green, red, white, and some really fun looking ones. And let's start up front with the venue's mugshot. You get a lot of Honey, I Shrunk the Palisade in this. You get the grill from the Palisade and these thinned out headlights kind of just scaled down quite a bit. Um, I really like the grill. I think the proportions on it are just right and the shape of it's actually really nice as well. The thinned out headlights, eh, a little hit or miss. I don't dig them on the Palisade and I don't dig them here. The rest of the face is really good looking. On this trim level, you get LED daytime running lights and on all venue trim levels, you get projector headlights. So not even halogens to work with. Overall, the details look really neat and tidy. Nothing is overrun. And like I said, I like that it's not too rounded out. It's just clean and simple, looks really good. Let's move on to the side profile. If you're asking me, the venue's best look is from the side. The side profile looks great. Uh, that's when you get the best sense of how big this car is and the proportions. Speaking of, it is absolutely perfect for getting in and out. This is where you're starting to win me over with the crossover versus car argument. But we're talking details from the side profile. Let me tell you a couple of my favorites. Right here, the body cladding on the venue is great. Automakers are getting into this weird trap lately where they're putting in huge amounts of body cladding to make things look rugged. Also, the wheels are the right size for the venue. These are 17 inch wheels. Hyundai didn't try to cram 18s or 19s and slam the car and give it these weird looks. The 17s are the perfect size. And then last but not least is this strong character line that goes right through the middle of the car. It's good, when we get to cars that are in this price point, you look for details to not make them look cheap. I'm digging the details in the rear as well. Starting right here, you get the venue badge placed right loud and proud in the middle of the car. And then in the tail lights, you have this little signature that breaks up the reverse light from the brake lamp. It's a nice detail. In all the venues, the fin is black, but in this car in particular, the roof is white, the car is blue, and then on all the single-tone cars, you just get this weird little black fin in the middle of it. I don't understand why it's not body matched, but the rest of it, looking good. All right, everybody, let's step inside of the venue. I'm only gonna do that one time, I promise. It was just right there in front of me, I had to take it. But let's get back to business. There's a lot of good things going on in here, but that really has to do with the denim trim. So let's step back and look at that one more time. With the denim trim, the color blue threw up all over the interior, but I like it, it's fun. You get this blue leatherette all over the seats and then these inserts, which are certainly not real denim, but it's close to it. If your economy car is going to be covered in hard plastics, which let's be fair, this is, you might as well make it blue and white. I dig it, it's really, really fun. Speaking of hard plastics, when you're at a car that starts less than $20,000, you look for really obvious places where they cheapen the interior. Luckily, Hyundai's not too guilty of that, with a few exceptions. There's no door handle here for the driver, although they went through the effort of doing a cutout for it. Uh, the roof material is more or less the same thing you get with four Starbucks cups from the drive-thru. It's like egg crate and not really good. The passenger sun visor doesn't extend to the side, so you're going to get a nice suntan. Uh, and then there are not two cargo nets for storage. There's only one, which is kind of strange. Every venue, even the cheapest one you can buy, comes with this guy. It's an eight inch touchscreen, and it comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. 
Navigation is an option. We have that present in this trim level, but I say it's not even necessary. If you get CarPlay and Android Auto standard, that's the best place to find navigation these days. Hyundai is listening to their buyers and they know that they want that standard, so they threw it in. They're eyeballing a much younger buyer with the venue, obviously, so this car has to pass the where the hell do I put my iPhone test? And the venue does, it passes it with flying colors. There's plenty of places to throw your phone as soon as you get inside of the car. Each of the venues comes with keyless entry, which is a nice option, although only the upper trim levels get the proximity key. From an ergonomic standpoint, the only downfall I've figured out in one day of driving, as soon as I got into the car, because the temperature gauge is right here in the middle for the air conditioning, I reached right here to turn it, but there is no control here. The fan speed controller is to the right. The volume knob is bigger than the tuning knob. That doesn't make much sense to me, uh, but there's nice metal trim and the screen is actually pretty well incorporated into the dashboard. All right, now that we are on the road and moving in the venue, let's first address the very slow moving elephant in the room. And that is none of the cars in this class are fast. In fact, there's nothing in this class that's even close to the word fast. And unfortunately, the venue does not break that mold. Under the hood is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that makes 121 horsepower and 113 pound feet of torque. The horsepower is probably what you're less concerned with. The more important figure is the venue achieves 30 miles to the gallon in the city, 34 on the highway, and 32 combined. A lot of the four cylinders that are in these cars, like the Kicks and some of the other ones, they're pretty buzzy, and Hyundai did a really good job of keeping that under control in the venue. Standard with the venue is actually a six-speed manual. We didn't get the chance to sample that today because the take rate for that is going to be pretty low, but the next trim level up you can get an IVT, which is just Hyundai speak, for a continuously variable transmission. And playing with that on the highway going down to the Florida Keys today, it did a really good job. In fact, you can even pop the car over to manual mode where it simulates shifting gears, although because it's a CVT, it's not actually shifting anything. So moving between the gears to get more power out of the car, it moves around really quick. If it had an automatic transmission, it wouldn't be nearly as fast. So CVT, not much to complain about here. In terms of refinement on the highway, we were really impressed with the venue. You have to remember at this price point, any refinement added to the car is refinement that we're gonna take. At highway speeds, not a lot of wind noise enters the car. Well done, Hyundai. There is a lot of road noise that comes in, but the venue has a really composed ride with suspension that soaks up a lot of the bumps. Uh, we've driven it in a variety of conditions today, and I've been really impressed with the way this car handles itself in terms of its composure and its suspension. The one downside with that is Hyundai put a torsion beam in the rear, and they also wanted to increase the ride height on the venue to give it a little bit more of an SUV crossover appearance. The compromise there is they added in a lot more suspension travel, and I think in the process added quite a bit of body roll to the venue. But all things considered, it's a good give and take considering how well it rides and how good the suspension is. Hyundai was quick to point out today that there's a variety of safety equipment that comes with the venue as well. A good amount of that is standard, and then some of the best stuff is optional. Standard in the venue, you get lane keep assist, you get a rear view camera with guidance lines for parking, which is really helpful, uh, front collision avoidance with pedestrian detection, and the coveted emergency autonomous braking. So the venue senses an oncoming collision, it will stop you from rear-ending the car in front of you. It's a great piece of standard equipment. Optional, you get blind spot monitoring, and then rear cross traffic alert as well. So they keep some of the more premium features at the top of the trim levels. Now, snow mode. First of all, the venue does not come with all wheel drive as an option. Hyundai says that money buyers won't opt for it because of the price point. They don't want the added cost. So instead, they reconfigured the front wheel drive. You drop the car into snow mode and it works in limited traction scenarios. Here in Florida, we don't have the opportunity to test the car in the snow. I think it stands a chance, but obviously all wheel drive is probably preferable depending on the situation. All right, obvious downsides with how it drives. Oh, the seats. Uh, I like how they look a lot. I don't like how they feel. The seats are manually adjustable in the venue and I haven't been able to find a good driving position all day. I know that's kind of on the nitpickier side, but no matter what, if you crank up the seating position, move it forward, backward, it just feels a little school busy. The steering wheel is a bit lower and I can't find a really nice, comfortable way to drive it. Here's the biggest compliment that I can pay this car. The Hyundai Venue is a good car, plain and simple. 
But when you consider its price point, it starts at $17,350 for the manual. This one, which is loaded with just about every option you can put on it, is just a hair over $23,000 with destination. At that price point, it's a great car. In fact, it's probably the new standard for the class.